All right, hi everyone. Welcome to this webinar on uh, GH data, which is now known as Augur. Um, I want to just go over a little bit about what GH data is and put it in the context of the Chaos project for you. So as you know, Chaos is a Linux Foundation project focused on collaboration for extracting knowledge from software development data. And our main aim is to keep track of the sustainability of these projects in different ways. So we need a common understanding of some kind of open source project health. And the aim is that the metrics themselves be are agnostic. So how they're implemented, whether it's in Biturgia, uh, Grimoire Lab, or GH Data slash Augur, or other tools that the metrics are defined in a consistent way so that whatever tools you're using when we talk about, for example, commits or unique commits that we're sure that we're talking about the same thing. Chaos is a project that has a lot of partners, a lot of engagement from the open source community involved in Linux, the Linux Foundation and beyond. And for the software piece, um, and it looks like I did not get the, but for the software piece, Biturgia, University of Missouri, University of Nebraska, Omaha, and University of Victoria are the big contributors right now for software. We also have some partnerships with other uh, metrics software providers. Um, there's a metrics community and um, let's see, software community. Okay, wait a minute. I am, this is not the one that I thought it was, but okay, well, anyway. Um, oops, I don't know what happened here. <laughs> okay, so great webinar. Um, start new. Okay. Okay, I don't know what happened here. Ha! Huh. All right. Um, well, there we are. So um, we have a lot of folks involved in the metrics committee. Grimoire Lab is our main implementation. It has a lot of different data sources and a tool called Percival that allows the integration of data sources. And we're working to engage Percival in what is now called Augur or GH data. It used to be called GH data. And GH data focuses on enabling comparisons, visual representations, and an API inside of it, its hosted version so that you can actually use the GH data Augur API to pull information from our hosted version of GH torrent. And just to give you an overview of what is involved in GH data, when you come to the GH data slash augers project, you have the opportunity to search on any combination of GitHub organization and project name. So here I've done a search on Rails Rails and it's been scoped from the very beginning. I can change that scope to start in 2015 and end in 2017. And you can see that down here, if I redo this search, it will show me those dates. And so, I don't know, it's um, not responding to my change right now for whatever reason. And so down here, you can see these are the commits per week in GH data for the life of Rails, the forks, issues, issue comments, commit comments, pull request comments, acceptance rate, um, and issues closed. And I see, we can also look at different factors so these are what are called um, growth maturity and decline metrics. We can look at how the engagement of open source developers has changed on the Rails Rails project over time. And down here you can look at, we can see code engagement, basically who are the folks who are making the most commits um, and what kind of the commit trajectories look like. So for code engagement, we can see the total number of commits and commit comments, and these are individuals represented in the circles and <clears throat> these individuals can have um, different levels of 
um, engagement or contribution. So for example, if I pick this person, I can see that they are, they've had a number of commits over here and then they had a number of, and it's a little bit slow to respond this morning, um, a similar number of issue comments over here. So there's code engagement and issue engagement. And we can just sort of see how people are engaging differently and their total contributions are reflected in the size of the circle. We can also see issue activity over time. And you can see that Rails had a very large engagement at the very beginning, and it's smaller now. And we can also look at the ecosystem for a project, and that's essentially the downloads per day if that's available, and the stars per week if that's available. And if dependencies are available for a project, that is also shown here. Now, one of the features of GH Data is it allows you to compare different projects with each other. So if I wanted to compare Rails Rails with Cake PHP, Cake PHP, I can do that. And what I'll see here is the 100% line is the level of commits per week uh, averaged for Rails Rails. And then I can see the relative difference for cake php so you can see in some cases cake php's rate of commits per week is higher um, up through mid 2011 and then it declines which probably indicates that the cake php project relative to rails is declining in, in engagement and this is helpful because sometimes it's hard to know if an open source project is is changing in a way that's meaningful. So for example, if I scroll back up here to just looking at Rails Rails and I see commits per week, you can see I've got some really spiky action here, but it looks pretty stable, a few ups and downs uh, over time in commits per week, uh, same with forks. And it's, it's really just showing a very steady level of contribution for the most part. Now, if I'm the owner of Rails Rails, that might not mean something clear to me and one way to get clarity is to compare your project with another one. So when I look at Rails Rails and I compare it with Cake PHP, we can see the relative level of engagement on these projects is, is somewhat different. So for Rails Rails, this, this steady line of contribution, which we see above when compared to Cake PHP shows that Cake PHP's engagement is actually declining in comparison to Rails Rails. And so that might be an indication that the Rails Rails project has a more stable level of growth maturity and decline compared with the others. Um, and then down here, when this finishes painting, we can also see the level of code engagement and community engagement. So the Rails Rails case is purple and the participants in Cake PHP are in the, the red or the orange color, depending how that's showing up on your screen. And so we can see also the individual level of engagement on this project is on these two projects is changing uh, a bit or has a different so different s strategies uh, rails rails has people with more commits than cake php in general um, so that concludes my basic overview of what the uh, gh data auger project provides and apparently my screen is repainting right now um, any questions Yes, and I have a question. In in some cases, we have been talking about GS data as a way of um, of prototyping metrics. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that? How how difficult it is to include a new metric, for instance, on on what work? It's, it's a great question. So, for including new metrics, we you would come to the GH data repository, which we'll rename to Augur uh, sometime soon. And there are two ways that you can, two or three ways that you can go about. Uh, creating new metrics. The first would be, let's say that you have um, a, a new metric that you want to create. The, you would look under the GH data directory and all of the GH, the GH data directory contains one Python file. And this is explained in a developer contribution readme as well, but it's got one uh, Python file for each source of data that it uses. So for the GitHub API, there's this Python file for GitHub for GHTorrent, there's this one. So let's say, if, for example, I wanted to add 
um, a metric under the GH torrent API. I would familiarize myself with the GH torrent schema. And like you can see here right now, there's a single table by date. This generates a query account occurrences of rows per date for a given table. And okay, and that's actually a general helper function. Let me go down. These are the basic time series queries. So if I wanted to, this is a stargazers query. And let's say that I wanted to create some new version of the stargazers query. I might copy this SQL and perhaps pass it um, some new parameters, uh, repo ID and user ID. Perhaps I want to look at stargazers by date or stargazers over time. And so I would, I would maybe change this. I would create a new function in here for stargazers over time or stargazers, this is stargazers by week. I'm trying to think of a new metric. Do you have a new metric in mind, Jesus? No, whichever. So, so um, essentially, you could just create a new function definition inside this Python file if it was based on GH torrent. Mm -hmm. If you similarly, and I think this is uh, maybe obvious to software developers, but less obvious to folks new to building software, if I wanted to create a, a GitHub API, a metric based on the GitHub API, I would come to the GitHub API Python file and make you know, add the new metric here and then issue a pull request back. So the GitHub API, it's using the graph query language. Um, and I don't know how familiar people are with that, but you can essentially pull a lot of information that's not in GHTorrent directly from the GitHub API, which we do in some cases. Mm -hmm. And then to make it to make it visible, there are two ways that you could go ahead and visualize that new metric once you created it. Um, the first way would be to look at the any time that you run the development version. Um, there's an API that gets generated, and this API is actually available to um, anybody that's that's running it. But this this is a public API that we're looking at right now. So, for example, for diversity commits and location by user is a metric, you can actually build your own web app that calls into this API once you've built out your new metric and build the visualization for the metric however you want. Another possibility, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, another possibility would be that you could actually go into our front end and make a new contribution to the visualizations in our front end. And we use a what's called a brunch server and under the brunch server, there's a, a number of files. Um, let's see, it's not there. It might be under app. So this is the, these are essentially JavaScript files that provide the visualization endpoints for data from the GH data, data from GitHub API, and then some other kinds of uh, data that's included. So we could just edit this and I'm not a JavaScript wizard, but we could, essentially add um, add a visualization to the front end here based on the new metric that you created. And for those of you familiar with JavaScript, we use the view JavaScript library, which you can see right here, right now. And that means if I understand well that if you want to have a visualization, which is of, uh, of one kind that you already have, basically you only need to copy the code, to copy the code for the new metric. And exactly. That's it. Yeah. Like, so we have a lot of line visualizations and some bubble charts already deployed and you could mm -hmm. essentially take a look at, um, let's see. Uh, okay. So this is actually the, the main one. So this is, um, These are some, yeah. that's the bubble chart. So there's a set of dependencies and hierarchies in here, but essentially you could create a new, um, this is the, the view card for um, some of our issues per week. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I see. So basically you, you need to, to, to create a new one, to have a new uh, room, a new space in the, in the web page. She's, hold on. Okay. 
apparently my dentist chose now to call <laughs> um, and um, yes and there's also a contributing markdown file here mm -hmm. which which essentially describes you know the simple process of cloning the repo um, and submitting a pull request um, which is actually there's another There's another markdown file. Uh, maybe it's in the README. That's how to install it. And then, okay. I see we have a developer guide here that's referenced there. Should probably have that in the front page, but right now it's under docs. And it explains everything in here about creating a function in Python, dealing with the dependencies, adding tests, um, creating the endpoint function. Mm -hmm. um, and that's in the first document. And then part two is showing how to use view metrics, graphics, and cube for the front end. And this just explains the different parts and how to add a time series, for example, metric. Mm -hmm. So the, the adding a time series metric is actually pretty straightforward. You would, you know, create a time series. You just, this line with whatever you created, your end, your endpoint name is whatever you put into the Python file as the definition function name. And you just add that to ghdataapi.javascript. Okay, this is, I'm sorry. Apparently I'm popular today. <laughs> and then you add, you know, you can add a chart here. And as long as the chart is one of the charts that already exists, uh, it works just good. It works fine. And then you can add comparison functionality as well if you want to include this in the comparisons. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, and this will be renamed to Augur shortly. I just, I don't want to rename it to Augur before I've got everyone coordinated around that because it'll change a bunch of deploy stuff for okay. us. Cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And so one of the, you know, one of the roadmap things that we have is adding new, you know, under for the Python files, we're going to add one for um, Percival at some point in the near future and for other data providers, I think, mm -hmm one of the functions that people have asked for is the ability to select a set of repositories so that you can compare maybe 50 repositories with each other um, at a more detailed level. So that's that's some of what we might do and we might use Percival for that. So that's that's kind of what's happening with um, with the Augur GH data project. And I think, you know, one thing to point out is a lot of, a few companies are using this API just to prototype using their own visualization. So. Mm -hmm. um, the provision of the of a API is helpful for people to get started. A lot of times, organizations have their own way of putting front end things together, but there might be they might be useful to have the back end API mm -hmm. as well. Um, did I? I, th I guess I have to go back. So, other other questions that folks have. No, thank you from my side. Thank you very much for explaining it. Now I have a much more clear idea of how to work with it. So thank you very much. No, thank you, Jesus. And I think we had a couple other people um, online. Um, so anybody else that's online have any questions? All right. Well, thank you very much for participating in this webinar on GH data slash auger related to the chaos project. We're going to do these webinars um, every week or so, week or two. And the next one is going to be focused on Grimoire Lab. And we'll probably, Jesus, do you know, and that will, will that happen next week or the week after? Very likely next week. So next I'm announcing on the mailing list. Okay. So that'll be announced on the mailing list. Thank you all for participating. And I will see you online. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.